I can't follow that. That was amazing. I actually asked Dr. Brady Camp. She has a video of me ground collecting a stallion, and I think I saw the owner in her, and I said, please don't show that video <laughs> because it's like, uh, I don't know, mildly embarrassing sometimes when you're the one under there. Um, but anyway, so the question I got asked to talk about is what is, um, how do we, what are the pitfalls of cultures and cytologies? Why are we doing them? What, um, what can we say about them? And kind of what are the function? I mean, one of the most basic questions is why are we doing them? So obviously for those of us trying to breed these mares, what we're trying to do is figure out is this uterine environment healthy enough to sustain breeding, conceive, and then carry a pregnancy? So it's pretty much a black box, no pun intended, and what you're doing is trying to figure out is this healthy? And so we're trying to use as veterinarians the tools available to us, and none of them are 100%. So over time, there's lots of studies showing which different, I'm seeing people in the crowd that are going to talk, <laughs> um, which ones are the most effective and also the most time efficient. When you're standing there and we need to make a decision that day or in the next few days, we need to use tools that are readily available to us. So for the culture and cytology, what are we talking about? These are samples of the endometrium, and you can take them in multiple different ways. The cytology is looking at the cell type or the population of cells that are in the endometrium or in the lumen of the endometrium. And what we expect to see, and we can recover these samples either by a swab culture. What I have pictured up here is the collagen swab or the double guarded swab. And that allows you not to get samples from the vagina, but pass through the cervix and take just the uterine sample. Sometimes we'll have, we can take this sample either with a small volume lavage, and even endometrial biopsy could be considered a form of cytology. But basically what we're looking at as what are the cells in the uterine lumen. So if you look at these slides here, this is the normal endometrial cells that we see. And during estrus, you may see one or two inflammatory cells or neutrophils, but when we get large numbers of those, especially ones that look like they're active or phagocytizing or eating bacteria, that's a sign that there's something going on in the uterine lumen. And interestingly, even if they have an infection or not, the presence of those cells are inflammatory and detrimental to sperm. So we do that cytology to really see what is the environment in there. And then the culture, standardly what we're doing right now is an aerobic culture. So we're submitting that swab and plating it in our micro lab and figuring out are there any bacteria or potentially even fungi or yeast that are growing there. Um, and, and basically, neither one of these is a gold standard, but we're using them together with our clinical findings on transrectal ultrasound and speculum to make a decision, is this mare sound for breeding? When we talk about how sensitive they are, that means when we look at what the results of these are compared to a gold standard, like a biopsy, how accurate are they? Um, well, a cytology is actually considered a little bit more accurate in terms of identifying inflammation. So its sensitivity, depending on the study, ranges anywhere from 30 to 70 percent. And the culture actually doesn't do the best job in terms of truly identifying an issue of inflammation. But what the culture does tell you is what is actually there. So if you do get a positive culture, that's considered significant. And in a very... Um, helpful study, one of the things that I like to look at when we look at studies is, okay, great, they were able to replicate that in the lab, but for those of us here, how does this apply to our population of mares? Well, this study done by Dr. Riddle and LeBlanc was done on the population of thoroughbred mares here in central Kentucky, and what that study showed is that mares with a positive cytology or culture had lower pregnancy rates. So is this significant? Yes, it's significant. So if you have evidence of inflammation on your cytology and a positive culture, you need to look at it. Because if you go ahead and breed, you are risking a lower pregnancy rate, which wastes the stallion's time and the mare's time and money. Um, and the lowest pregnancy rates were associated with very severe inflammation. So oftentimes, we'll get a cytology that has severe inflammation, but no growth on culture. And as veterinarians and farm managers, we need to pay attention to that. Um, an isolation of a microorganism. So basically, if we had a positive culture and something else was, um, or excuse me, if we had severe inflammation and something was identified on culture, it didn't affect the pregnancy rate anymore. Really, the inflammation was probably the more important thing there. So when your vet, when your vet does not take a cytology, you do risk missing 
identifying inflammation that's going on in the uterus. And I can say clinically, there's a lot of mares that on ultrasound and speculum exam look normal, and they may have severe inflammation in their uterus. The downfall of cytology and culture is that a lot of times you can have inappropriate technique. So if you take a swab and you scrape it through the vagina, you're going to pick up inflammation and bacteria. So getting experienced in this, and one of the ways as vets we know we're doing a good job, is that we get a lot of no growths on normal mares or no inflammation on normal mares. If you're getting positive cytologies, unless you're working in a completely barren population of mares in a nightmare, you should be looking to see what cytology and culture results come back, because the majority of them should be normal. So if you see a lot more severe inflammation and a lot more growth, you start to worry about contaminants or maybe that you're not getting the right samples. And certainly there are samples where we might not have hit a pocket of inflammation that we needed to. And so things like the small volume lavage come into play. Um, again, this is not a definitive answer for endometritis or diagnosing is this mare's uterus appropriate for breeding. It doesn't tell you if you have adhesions. It doesn't tell you if the mare's um, going to ovulate normally. It's just one tool in helping us be as efficient as possible. Um, and one of the things that I think for all of us who are doing this is looking at the ultrasound findings as well as the culture and cytology and the speculum exam is still incredibly important to us. Um, and the other thing I will say is just as important as a negative result is and that maybe you've missed it, a positive result needs to be interpreted too because a lot of times people will miss a breeding with just a growth of one colony of E. coli. And so your veterinarian needs to make the decision, maybe you need to culture again because they're not going to become pregnant without breeding. And so just there are cases where I've gotten a positive cytology and culture and I say, you know what, I'm sorry, we got to repeat this because this mare looks too good and I do not want to miss this breeding. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you.